If you have heard anyone talk about the big, bad, scary sounding nuclear option in healthcare politics today, the odds are you've heard someone lie to you today. We will name names and set some proverbial pants on fire in just a moment. We've got an all star lineup of guests joining us this hour California Senator Barbara Boxer, Salon.com's Glenn Greenwald, Jeremy Scahill is here to talk about the freak show that is Blackwater, and Blackwater implicating a character from South Park in the latest thing that they've been caught doing. It is all coming up this hour. But we begin tonight with an effort to clear up a big, fat, embarrassing political lie. Democrats have already decided on this so-called nuclear option or reconciliation process. This would be uh, the nuclear option, and I think it would be a terrible mistake. Reconciliation, that sounds real nice and gives me a warm, fuzzy feeling. It's a nuclear option. No, it's not, actually. It's not the nuclear option. This is the last ditch, last day, last try effort to stop health reform by lying about it. One day before the health care summit in Washington. It is reported that the speaker has already said that she has the process for reconciliation figured out. It was never designed for a large comprehensive piece of legislation such as health care. As you all know, it's a budget exercise. And that's why some refer to it as the nuclear option. Actually, no, that's wrong. No one calls it a nuclear option except you guys. And you know you're lying when you do that. On the eve of the health summit, Republicans are trying to get away with saying that Democrats passing health reform through budget reconciliation rules, where you only need 51 votes to pass something in the Senate instead of 60, uh, Republicans are trying to get away with saying that would be the nuclear option. Sounds awful, right? It's nuclear. Uh, except that it isn't the nuclear option, and Republicans know that. The nuclear option and reconciliation are two totally different things, which Republicans are intimately aware of. And we know that because the nuclear option was the Republicans' own threat five years ago, not to pass something through reconciliation, but to do away with the filibuster altogether, to prevent Democrats from filibustering President Bush's judicial nominees. Senate Republican leader Bill Frist says he will soon trigger what's known as the nuclear option, a vote to change Senate rules to ban filibusters on judicial nominees. Oh, yeah, that's what the nuclear option is. The nuclear option is changing the Senate rules to eliminate the filibuster, to get rid of the ability to require a 60-vote a supermajority in the Senate. What Democrats are talking about is something totally different, passing health reform through reconciliation. Passing health reform with 51 votes instead of 60. Not the nuclear option. And Republicans know it. They know it because A, they created the nuclear option back in 2005, and B, they've used reconciliation over and over and over again. And there's been no nuclear explosion. They've defended its use. They've never described it as nuclear before, before Democrats decided that they were going to do it. We are using the rules of the Senate here. That's what they are, Senator. Reconciliation is a rule of the Senate. All this rule of the Senate does is allow a majority of the Senate to take a position and pass a piece of legislation. Support that position. Now, is there something wrong with majority rules? I don't think so. Is there something wrong with majority rules? I don't think so, unless Democrats ever want to use them. <laughs> and then they won't, we won't call it reconciliation anymore. We don't call it, we'll call it using the rules of the Senate. Then we'll call it nuclear. Republican Senator Orrin Hatch calling it, quote, the highly partisan nuclear option of reconciliation. Republican Senator John Cornyn tweeting today about, quote, reconciliation, the 51 vote nuclear option. What's going on here is a deliberate attempt on the part of Republicans to define nuclear down, to conflate these two totally separate things, to demonize the way that Democrats have to pass health reform right now by calling it the nuclear option, even though the nuclear option is a real thing in the Senate, and this isn't that, has nothing to do with that. Perhaps the reason that Republicans are so unwilling to call this what it is, reconciliation, uh, is because they have a really long record of using reconciliation. My Republican friends are lamenting reconciliation. But I would recommend for them 
to go back and look at history. Realistically, they should stop crying about reconciliation as if it's never been done before. It's done almost every Congress, and they're the ones that used it more than anyone else. Republicans have indeed used reconciliation repeatedly to pass their own agenda items. They used reconciliation to pass not one, but two giant tax cuts during the Bush administration. You want to say reconciliation is never used to change the health care system, Senator Kyle? It was never designed for a large, comprehensive piece of legislation such as health care, as you all know. Actually, that's completely, utterly, 100 percent knowingly wrong. That is not true at all, Senator Kyle, and you know it's not true. Reconciliation is how the health care system has been essentially formed in this country over and over and over again. Have you ever heard of COBRA? COBRA is the law that lets people keep their employee health insurance for a while after they've been laid off. You want to know what the R in COBRA stands for? Re -re 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 Reconciliation. Oh, yeah, look at that. In 1986, Congress passed the Consolidated Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act, COBRA, which forever affected health care coverage in this country. You ever heard of S-CHIP, the state children's health insurance program? CHIP was created in a budget reconciliation bill in 1997. Reconciliation is how we make changes to our health care system. As NPR pointed out today, quote, over the past three decades, the number of major health financing measures that were not passed via budget reconciliation can be counted on one hand. This is how health reform is done in this country. And this effort to say that using reconciliation would be the nuclear option, that it would somehow be unprecedented, is a lie. It is a lie and it is, it is disingenuous. It is disingenuous in the sense that it's not just a misunderstanding, they know they're lying about it. And people in the media who repeat what Republicans are saying about this instead of challenging them on it are helping Republicans spread a lie. Republicans have used reconciliation over and over and over again, and it, as, as was pointed out to them by Democratic Senator Barbara Boxer last March. 19 times since 1980 has reconciliation been used by far and away more times by the Republicans, namely 13 times they used it. They never came here and complained. They used it. I have the record. Senator Boxer actually inserted into the public record 13 previous instances of Republicans using this thing that they now say has never been done before. That would be so unprecedented. This thing that they're now calling the nuclear option, even though the nuclear option is a totally different thing. This thing that they now say that Democrats shouldn't dare use. This thing that they've used again and again and again.